Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Tuesday, and we're gonna we're gonna do some fun stuff today. And let's see, what have we done? I had a good weekend. Had a lot of family into town, and uh, I finished my vulture animation, which I'm really excited to show you guys. And my voice just came out over there. That was really weird. Dustin's got me up on the other computer, and there's a like a one minute delay. That was kind of cool. But anyway, uh, I got a new background. We're doing creatures today. So today I was walking to lunch and we've got a lot of cicadas out. Uh, cicadas are the big insects that, you know, are always making noises up in the trees. And this is about the time of year that they actually start dying off. Uh, and so I found this cicada right here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Is that in focus there? Yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. get too close. Otherwise it won't be in focus. But I got this cicada and I thought, man, wouldn't that be fun to use that as inspiration to come up with some kind of creature, an insect-like creature. So he gave me the insect, or not the insect, but the creature background, or here it is, right there, the creature background. It's a perfect creature for an art teacher. <laughs> That's right, because <laughs> I am the creature art teacher. But, uh, uh, so there's that. So we're gonna, I'm going to use that as inspiration, and we're going to make a bug out of it, or make, or make a, some kind of creature out of it. Um, and I'm also going to play for you the animation that I've been working on over the last two weeks. And uh, But before I get into all that, I've got Dustin with me. Say hi, Dustin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and I've got Nick, my business partner. He's in Sarasota, and he's going to be answering questions as well. Hopefully, um, we didn't get the mic thing worked out this time around, did we, for you? No, not yet. Okay. Well, we, D we Dustin will... We extension and all that. But, Dustin uh, we'll will speak up. Later. Well, Dustin will speak up. Uh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, like that. <laughs> but let's switch over to the desktop real quick, Dustin. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I didn't share with you guys uh, was just kind of where I got, you know, I, these are griffin vultures. That was my inspiration. And so these are griffin vultures. These are uh, images that I pulled off the Internet uh, to get some of my uh, inspiration for my designs. I wanted to do something very simple. But griffin vultures are kind of that classic vulture that everyone thinks of when they think of vultures. And this image right here, this is the one where I, I had the dialogue and I saw these two guys and I saw the ribs sticking up. I know it's kind of a gruesome image. Excuse me. I just had lunch. <laughs> you, you okay? I know. You all right? <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, so... We got these guys, and I just thought, you know, that could be really cool conversation. So that's where this image was really the inspiration behind the shot that I animated. And so here in TV Paint, this is TV Paint software, uh, I animate. Go ahead and do the over-shoulder shot, Dustin, so everyone can see. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I work on a, on a Wacom Cintiq uh, pen display, which is what I'm, uh, this is a 27-inch right here. And the software I use for my animation is TV Paint. So I do hand-drawn animation, but I do it right on my pen display. It's really cool. Uh, let's go back to the screen. Yep. So, uh, oh, you know what the other thing is? Um, real quick, Dustin, let's go back to my close-up. Because I'm going to, I have to jump over. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to set up. Um, we need Nick. I need to see Nick. Bookmarks, there we go. And I'm going to put Nick up, up top here. I hear, I hear, I hear. There he is. Putting Nick up there. There we go. Sorry, guys. There we go. There we go. All right. So. Uh, so this is uh, so this is the animation, and I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you. Hopefully, it's loud enough. Oh, not too loud. But this is how it came out. This is with all the drawings. I decided, to, the guy on the left, I decided to keep him as a held cell and just have some eye blinks. But I wanted him just to be just dead. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. One more time. You know? You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. So there you go. So whoever uh, suggested to have the little bit of meat crumbs kind of stick to the other vulture, thank you for that idea. It was fun. 
So that's the that's the shot. And this the, uh, for the once again for those that don't know, this is a part of a whole series of shots that I'm animating for an upcoming course that I'm creating on acting for animation. So what I'm going to do uh, in that course is break all these shots down and talk about right from the beginning what I think about how I how I approach acting and animation, how I think about dialogue, phrasing dialogue. Uh, we're going to talk about pantomime. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff um, that'll go pretty deep. Uh, I touch on it a little bit in my in my regular uh, animation course on creatureartteacher.com at my website creatureartteacher.com. And uh, anytime you hear me say creatureartteacher.com, the, yeah. there he goes. That's creature art teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, it's going to be, this one will be, uh, I'll go into it quite a bit more, just the acting specifically. So that's what I'm going to be doing there. So anyway, that's that. Um, let's go back to Photoshop because I'm going to work in Photoshop today and I'm going to get rid of these guys. And here's the cicada. So I'm just going to keep that there. Now I actually, I want you guys to be able to see that. And I'm going to kind of use that, but I've also got, th this is the one I want to use, the one that you really can't see because I can't get too close to the camera without it going out of focus. But I've got this very, very cool cicada that uh, I'm just fascinated by insects. They're very edible, by the way, too. This guy's hollowed out by ants, but cicadas actually are, are good insects to eat. But uh, I'm going to start by creating a new document and we're going to go 20 by 16. That's my usual size, 20 by 16, about 300 DPI. I'm going to go with that. And while I'm doing this, Dustin, we are open for questions. And we do not have any questions. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want to ask any questions, you are more than welcome. I'm going to bring this guy over. And I'm just going to keep him off to the side. And... Uh, there we go. I'm going to keep him off to the side. And we're just going to, I'm just going to keep that up there for inspiration. I'm just going to start to sketch. Now I've got this guy here that I want to look at. I really love kind of their bull. They've got this almost like a rhinoceros, a bull kind of uh, shape to them. So I, I'm going to use that as inspiration. But one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, before we get into this, um, Nick and I have started, we've got this new streaming membership plan, uh, and it's on sale. Today's the last day it's on sale. This is a whole new plan. It's a, it's a, another way of, you know, you guys, you know, streaming content off of our website at creatureartteacher.com. Um, that's on sale and our regular membership is on sale. Now, regular membership is still your best value, but if you've got something where you just want to go month to month, we've got the streaming membership now uh, in, in that category as well. So I, I really recommend you guys check it out because today's the last day for the sale. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start sketching this guy. Now, like I said, I like that kind of, that big, that big shape to him, but I want to anthropomorphize him. Well, that was a mouthful anthropomorphize them a little bit. Am I adding syllables? How many of those cicadas have you eaten? I have never eaten cicadas. I've eaten grubs. I've eaten like a whole bowl full of grubs. And they may have been cicada. No, they weren't really cicada grubs. They were they were different. Oh, did you stay up a little bit late, Dustin? I think Dustin stayed up a little bit late. He's yawning a little bit. I'm going to call I'm him yawning. yawning. My eyes are not shutting. He's yawny. Dustin's yawny today. Uh... Twitch question. Hey, Aaron, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, man. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to anthropomorphize them a little bit. Have you ever drawn any comics? I haven't really drawn that many comics, no. <laughs> the other thing, too, is I like that shape of the head. Let's just... I'm just going to start drawing. And what makes a cicada a cicada are those eyes. Those eyes are shaped... Right here. Um, That's a cicada shape. And then that triangular mouth. I got a big question here. Um, did you ever deal with creative disagreement when the director or supervising animator wanted you to change something you felt strongly about? And then what was it like to play the opposite role 
and insist on important things when you became when you became the director or supervising animator? Yes, um, I did. Hold on to that question because we've got um, we've got a, a delivery guy. Can you can you get that, Dustin? Sorry, I've got you. Uh, UPS is here. Get that, Dustin. Thanks. We weren't expecting that, but um, I uh, there's a package that I've been waiting for. And it has to be signed for. I think I got a new Cintiq that just arrived. So here, I'm going to bring his head up. And yes, let me go back to the question. I did have creative differences. Um, but in the, in the end, you know, if the direct the director should know more about the movie than the rest of us, right? And so, there's a lot of times my what I was thinking or uh, expressing, I wasn't. A lot of times I didn't have the whole picture in mind, and so sometimes it was completely off. Yeah, it's your new Cintiq. I got another Cintiq. <laughs> so, so Did let's. You, uh, the the supervisor director question. Yeah, and but then, you know, there is other times I always had an open policy. We always had this uh, um, a policy on the movie when I was directing. We called it meet it or beat it. So, you had to do at least what we had and if we had if you had a better idea, we always always uh, had an open door. And so, if you could if you could beat it, we would listen. Now, granted, I was always very adamant about the reasons why we had our our various shots in the film. Um and so, you know, we went that way. So, there you go. Um, YouTube question. Here's a big one. Uh, what do you think of unions when it comes to the animation industry? We don't have them in Canada, and I feel like it would help overworking and unpaid overtime. Well, if you're getting unpaid overtime, yeah, that's ridiculous. And so I do think unions help in that sense. Um, you know, nowadays it's so international, it's, it's hard to say. I... Uh, I, I think union. First of all, unions are a good thing. They're 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 there for your rights as a worker. So in my opinion, that that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I've had, I know other guys that have said you know the only time I was ever out of work was when I, I, I was on strike. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's I, don't, I couldn't say really. How do you go about uploading a, an audio clip from your iPhone? I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone. But um, but no, as far as, but from with my phone, where'd it go? Oh, my phone's right there. It, I just I upload it to Dropbox. I have a Dropbox account, and I have the Dropbox app on my phone, and so I just upload it to my Dropbox account, and then I, I get on my computer and I pull it off of Dropbox, and that's how I get my audio files. So now now that I've got kind of the idea, I've got it. I'm going to turn that one off. That way I'm just drawing too much of the insect. So here. What are your thoughts on the uh, show Avatar, The Last Airbender? I've never seen it. I know Dustin likes it. You want to take that one, Dustin? Yeah, I absolutely love, love the show. I absolutely love it. The so you're saying you love it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, great characters, great story, and also the animation is just amazing, especially the fighting sequences, because they're based off of real martial arts. So seeing that in action is, is crazy cool. And um, are you a, are you a lefty? I am a lefty. <laughs> yes, I am. So here I'm just giving it a little bit more. More of a human slant, human shape. Now that people know that you got you got the box, they're they're asking for an unboxing. You want to do an unboxing? <laughs> yeah. Let's do an unboxing. All right. Do we have a? We need a knife, a knife. Can you go out in the kitchen you, and go get a knife? So here, I want to look at the mouth parts. See, I'm looking at him like this. I'm just going to do like an upper torso like we're doing like this, like we're looking at. There's no... There's no... Uh, antenna. There we go. There you go. 
Go ahead and slice that baby open and then we'll bring it over here. It's easier for you to get it than me right now because I'm still, I'm trying to draw, I want to draw at the same time. So I'm going to, I'm going to fake some of these mouth parts in here. That kind of goes away from being cicada though, doesn't it? Oh, I don't want to mess up that perspective. I want that, that shoulder should be down in here. It's like his shoulders are pushed forward. Have that one like his arm, arms are crossed, like so. Well, looks like there's yet another layer. Yet another layer? I don't like that. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. All right, Dustin, why don't you come over here, Dustin? Sure, with the box. Yeah, we'll go with the box. What's in the box? Oh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you keep working that. I'm going to... I'm going to try to use my feet to hold it down. I'm going to push, I'm going to push these to kind of feel insect-like, but I'm trying to... Get a little bit of uh, anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism in there. It's looking a little cockroachy. I think I got to go a little bigger on the head, maybe. Let's just see. Can you hear Dustin over there? <laughs> maybe go a little, a little bigger. Maybe squash it down a little bit. Yeah, like uh, there's something there I like because I'm going to go back in here and let that hump come down like that. There. Yes, we can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring it over here. Get, get my fan out of the way. This is my biggest fan right here. All right. Uh, am I on camera? There. Oh, there we go. We do it that, you want to do it with that camera? Yeah. And just take it off the... Yep, yep, yep. Okay. This is a 22 HD Creative Pen Display that I am opening. I'm not going to be able to hook it up and start using it. But for those of you that are... Oh, we're going to talk to here. Yeah. For those of you that um, have never gotten a Cintiq, this is what you get. And... Uh, they box them very, very well. This is an unexpected surprise. Right? I know. I completely forgot this was coming. So what you get in here, this is all of your, this is like the driver and all of the wiring and all that kind of stuff is in here. So that's what you get. Here's the driver. This is all the, all the power cords. Here is the actual stylus. So it all comes together in a very, and there's the little stand for the stylus right there. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So it all comes very neatly packed right here. I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot. This won't be like a real traditional un unboxing just because I was so unprepared for this. We're just kind of doing this off the cuff. And then inside here, here's our, let's go ahead and pull this out. Do you have any hand with that? Well, let's see. I can pull this out. There we go. This is the stand, I believe. There's a lot of wiring in there. Let me get the wiring out. There we go. There. So this is the stand right here. So that goes on there. If I pull this out, the Cintiq mounts. So the Cintiq mounts on this, it just slides right into here and you go to town. Nice. Okay. So there's that. 
But I do want to get back to drawing. So we're going to look at this and then we're going to get back to drawing. And then the, the display itself is here. So uh, with all this warnings and everything, all this warnings. It up with. Uh, oh no, this is good. So there we go. There's the 22. I'll turn it around. This is it goes this way. That's and this sets. If you look on the back, this this slides right into the stand on the back here. The wiring, everything's pretty straightforward. You've only got a couple wires that come out. And they hook into the computer and your display, your mon uh, monitor, and usually it takes us about. 10 minutes to set one of these up and um, and they're an awesome tool if you can swing it I know that uh, you know a good pen display can be somewhat cost prohibitive a little bit expensive but if you can swing it I'm always always recommending that you get the best tool you can use for the job that you're doing I do digital art every single day. I teach digital art. I don't want to do it on an iPad all the time or a little 13 inch display. I want the biggest I can find. And yes, it costs a little bit more money, but I'm going to be using these, these displays for 10 years down the road. So they're, they're very much worth it for me. And if this is something that you're going to be doing every day, then it might be worth waiting a little bit and saving up for the bigger display. I always recommend the bigger display. And uh, are, are the smaller displays just as good? They they are just as good, but I personally, I personally like a bigger display to draw on. Okay, I want I want to I want for me, old school. I'm not used to doing this. I want to do this, and so that's I'm just more comfortable doing that. And uh, and so that's. That's where I'm at with all that stuff. And um, also, the uh, I don't personally use the touch. Um, some people like it. I don't use it. And uh, so I usually, because I'm I, once again, I I don't I just do my keyboard shortcuts, and that's pretty much it. But that was I know mean, that was a kind of a short unboxing. But I don't I don't want to pull it all apart right now because I still want to I want to draw. Right. But um, but that's uh, that's what a Cintiq looks like when you get a big Cintiq and it comes in the mail. That's that's it. And I can't remember how this was put together. How the heck was this put together? I was just say when that happens. Yeah, I can't remember. Shoot, it went this way. There we go. All right, let's get back to drawing. I want to get back to drawing. That's why I'm here. I'm here to draw, not to unbox. Although unboxing is kind of fun. All right, let's get this. Up. I'll take that out of the way, Dustin. Sorry. Come on, big man. Sasquatch. At least it's not as heavy as the one I currently have at my place. Looks like a throwing star. Look, I got a giant throwing star. Here, catch. <laughs> hey, look, I'm impaled. <laughs> I think I'm just going to roll with this because um, I'm just going to be doing this straight right off the cuff. So I'm going to do this as like a little portrait and use, you know, this little guy and the way he's built as, as inspiration for some of these other parts in his body. Now, why did you get the 22 in Cintiq? Uh, we all thought that you were waiting for the 32. I am waiting for a 32. <laughs> I'm getting that too. <laughs> we have needs for multiple Cintiqs. And so we got we got a 22, and uh, we're also getting a, a 32. Nice. Nice. There we go. Kind of liking these shapes. I'm trying to keep a nice big basic shape here. Uh, which would you say is more difficult, uh, animating and 
anthropomorphizing a creature with human characteristics, or a human being whose characteristics are, are given? Um, you know, they both have their challenges. Uh, that's a good, that's a really good question. They both have their challenges. I might try putting, I'm going to go on another level. I'm going to try putting something here. Um, they're, they're, yeah, they both have different challenges. I wanted, just wanted to see what it would be like to put these like little arms here. Nah, that's too crowded. I'm going to stick with this, keep it a little bit more human. But they both have, you know, really big challenges. And so you just, you just, yeah, you know, when you're designing something in anthropomorphic, you've got the design aspect to it. And then, you know, then you're just pulling into what, like when, like I'm animating those vultures. I'm pulling what I know about, I'm putting myself into it, you know, as a character. And, and but I also need to know the vulture, you know, anatomy and, you know, all of that. Okay. Oh, and uh, we have a birthday in the live stream. Martin Berger here on Facebook says, thank you for doing a live stream on my birthday. Martin Berger? Martin Berger. All right. R G E R. Right on. Happy birthday, Martin. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Yeah, babe. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Uh, who worked on the salmon run in Brother Bear? Who worked? Oh, a whole bunch of people worked on the salmon run. That was a big. That was a big part of the production. Uh, pretty much everybody. Was there like a like a team for like almost each of each individual character during the salmon run? No, there, I mean there was the miscellaneous bears, but then there, you know, the Grizz, the big bear, or Tug was it? Tug, Tug. Tug. Yeah, Tug. Um, Tug. You got the names of your own characters. Yeah, well, wow. he was Grizz for a long time, which yeah. is a completely unoriginal name. But uh, Tug uh, was um, uh, Rune Benicky, uh is the name of the animator. A genius animator. He started animating when he was eighteen. Never even went to college for it. He was he was doing features. The guy's a genius. So here I'm doing a lot of different plays. But there's a lot, you know, the, we had the um, Coda, uh, who was supervised by Alex Cooperschmidt. We had Kenai, supervised by Byron Howard, who has gone on to direct Zootopia and won the Oscar and also directed Tangled and Bolt, co-directed. Um, so we've got a, we had a lot of good talent in there, amazing talent. In your courses, do you teach how to animate human characters, or do you stick mainly uh, to animals? No, we talk, it's not. I don't. I don't talk. About, I do have animal locomotion stuff, and I in my in my anatomy course, I talk about walk cycles and runs and things like that. Uh, not in my animation course so much. I do talk touch on you know animating runs and that sort of thing in my animation course, but um, my animation courses are not so much about species as they are about the principles so that you can apply them apply those principles and then it doesn't really matter what you're animating as long as you do your research but uh, in my acting for animation course that I'm going to be creating um, I'm going to have humans in it animals all kinds of stuff uh, I got a question uh, uh, from Nick oh a YouTube question uh, you mentioned yours. I'm a blues guy. Who's my favorite blues guitarist? Ooh. I've got so many. I've got a lot of favorite guitar players. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Well, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan is probably my best favorite. I love Eric Clapton. I love um, some of my favorite singers like Taj Mahal and Buddy Guy. And uh, I mean, it just goes on. Uh, Keb Mo. Uh, lots and lots of them. And my personal all-time favorite is Ken Mo. Yeah. And he's a and a, he's a great guy in person too. Yes, he is. So I think I've got this is I'm just going to do this as like a portrait, you know, just like he's sitting for a portrait. So we got this. Let's put a necklace on him or something. We'll get that all. So I'm not it sketched in now. Actually, let me turn it around. Let's see what it looks like. It feels like it, all the perspective is working right. I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> wow, that was a big one. That was juicy. That, that's, that's one of my sneezes. <laughs> that, was, that was a hard one. Sorry about that. Holy smokes. That was straight up. <laughs> <laughs> 
That felt like good. Blew Man, up over there. I love sneezes. That was awesome. Yeah. I made my head itch. Every itch. time I sneeze, it makes you laugh so hard. You I know. Cry. Okay, I like that. So I'm going <laughs> to shoot that back around. Uh, how is my relationship with Mark Hen? A YouTube question. My relationship with Mark Hen is great. I've known Mark for 30 years. And uh, we worked very closely together on... Beauty and the Beast, he animated Belle, I animated Beast, and on The Lion King, he animated Young Simba, I animated Young Nala, and Aladdin, he animated uh, uh, Jasmine, I animated Raja. He and I always worked together, and um, and we always had a great time. Uh, we have a great relationship. Each time I go out to the studio in California, we run into each other, and we catch up, and no, he's a good guy. I learned a lot from him, actually. I learned a lot from Mark. So I've got a question from earlier about the different Cintiq sizes and everything. Yeah. And uh, your feeling for Cintiqs, uh, the bigger the better. But where would you say is the point of diminishing returns or even think, you know what, I wish this was a few inches smaller. Like how big would that be? 32, 36, 40, 44? Like how Probably big? seven feet. Seven feet. <laughs> just a giant canvas. I don't have I don't I don't believe I I love to draw big I love to paint big I love to draw big and so the if they keep making bigger Cintiqs I'm going to keep buying them even if they make one like the size of a wall like yes I will use just it turn the whole wall into one giant Cintiq monitor you I will I will use it <laughs> and you're thinking about investing into uh um into some VR for uh, for VR painting, right? Yes, uh, tilt paint. Tilt paint. Yeah, we'd love to. We want to get that set up uh, in one of my one of the rooms here, and uh, do a, a VR live stream. Well, um, I've been thinking about getting my own uh, VR set up, and so if uh, if I ever get it before you do, I can always bring bring the kid over so he can. That would be awesome. Yeah, because we're uh, we're gonna have to re reconnoiter what we were thinking about doing before, because the space in the house has changed a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> so here, oh, you know what I did wrong? Look at the perspective. I got the perspective going this way, and the eyes are going like this. You, see, you got to watch your perspective. Watch that perspective. So this should be. Well, let me get rid of that. Do you there have we any go. Memories that you believe are your own uh, "quote unquote" character-defining moments. Character-defining moments for me, as a, for me, for like my character. Yeah, yeah like as, as yourself, like something that changed. Yeah, one of the biggest things that ever happened to me that really affected me and kind of helped me approach life in general is I was lost in the ocean for three days when I was fourteen. I was stranded in the ocean. And uh, with my brother, my, my and my stepfather, and um, there was no way we were going to make it back to land, and uh, unless we started figuring things out and setting goals, it made made me very goal oriented, and um, and so we just set one goal at a time and didn't focus on the big picture. We didn't think about you know getting rescued. We weren't thinking about you know how the heck are we going to do this. We would set little goals. Okay. We need to figure out how we're going to ration our water. So we started doing that. We need to figure out how we're going to uh, ration our food that we have, you know, because we had some fish. Maybe we have, you know, we'll eat sushi for the next whoever, who knows how long. And then the next thing was, okay, we need to get to shore. What do we have on, you know, to get to shore? And so we started coming up with, we had a sail on board and we had to figure out how to get the sail, but we were 60 miles out in the ocean and everything was, oh, Dustin just says, no, Dustin, we'll be using a Mac. What's that? <laughs> Um, well, I, I said, Nick, I said I'll bring the VR kit over. I didn't say I was going to bring my whole computer over. Okay, so, but anyway, <laughs> um, but I, uh, as I was talking about the getting lost in the ocean, uh, it was just, it, it just really taught me how to set goals. And so I've always applied what I learned in that adventure that I had, um, I've always applied it to my life and in, in the way that I approach my career, my art, you know, I don't look at the big picture. You know, when I started out... 30 years ago, I never thought I would be a director. I just wanted to be a good artist. And so those were my goals. And that good artist led to something new. Once I achieved, you know, okay, I'm, I'm doing good art, 
then that opened up more doors for me because people were recognizing that. And so my next goal was the next level. And so I always just approached everything very goal oriented. And I still do that and it works very well for me. And so that I really learned that when I was stranded in the ocean in 1982 as a 14 year old kid. And after three days we were finally found. And that's how, that's how I got my work ethic my my ethic as far as you know how i approach everything when animating your own story would you recommend starting off on your own or gathering a group of artists to help you out it depends on how big the story is you know we're we're doing a story called snow bear it's a short it's an animated short it's only about eight minutes i purposely made it so that it's one character basically in an, an environment that's very sparse so we don't have a lot of uh line mileage there but even still, it's going to take about two or three or four of us to, to do it right. And so we're, you know, there's, we're doing that. But it could easily be, you know, a character count of 30. And it's, and it's a half hour long. And it's, you know, it's got a whole bunch of other, you know, complexities to it. So in which case you might want to think about, you know, a bigger crew. So it really depends on the story itself. So if you're thinking about doing something on your own, make sure you keep it small enough so that you can, you can get it done. That's important. So I got a, um, another question about that has to do with Aladdin. Aladdin. Um, it actually is a question that I, I, uh, I always wondered too. Uh, when Raja tore the pants off of a Jasmine's future suitor, um, why did it Prince look Ahmed? Like, <laughs> why did it look like Raja tore the prince's underwear instead of his pants? Because when the, because the it was watched, funnier. It was funnier. Yeah, it's funnier. And uh, I know when he's walking away, he's got a hole in his pants. And not in his underwear. But Exactly. But as he's walking away, if he's got a hole in his underwear but not his pants, you wouldn't be able to see it. Well, yeah, I mean, you could but, kind of rip it out of the top or something. But wouldn't that mean that Roger would be having a piece of, like, blue fabric in his mouth instead of underwear fabric? Yes, but it was just funnier. <laughs> it was funnier the other way. That's all. That's. I mean, it's, I know. Sometimes you just make that leap and you just cheat. I'm sure it may, like... A lot of people were really confused, like, but the, what the? <laughs> I actually never really thought about it until I until you asked me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you know, so I'm going very quickly. I'm just trying to, I'm trying, I'm looking at the bug, and, and I'm looking at this guy right here, and just I'm keeping kind of the the tone of it. Um, I'm thinking about plates and how they fit together. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep the insect, the insectness of it. But now I'm really just kind of making stuff up as I go. Now what exactly is force drawing? Forced drawing? Force, force drawing. Like you're forcing yourself to draw or something like that? I am I'm guess. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. I've never heard that term either. Forced? Forced drawing. Or uh, just what is force drawing? Like F -A -F -O -R -C -E? F-A-F-O-R-C-E? Yeah. Force drawing. Um, when you draw with a lightsaber? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think it's when you draw with a lightsaber. Yeah. It's when you draw with Ben Kenobi. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make light of it, but I, I, I've never heard the term force drawing, so I don't know. This is not the Cintiq you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I just logged in. Uh, what insect is this that you're currently drawing? This is a little... I'm mixing kind of... An, I'm making it anthropomorphic, but I found a cicada. Uh, this is a cicada. We have them all over... They're all over the United States, but we have a lot of them here in Florida. In some parts of the United States, they have a 17-year life cycle. So they actually live in their larval form underground for 17 years, and then they all come out all at once. And they, they breed, they, they, they burst out of their skin, they, they take their adult form, and uh, they may, make little baby cicadas, and then they die a couple of years later. But it's literally millions and millions and millions and millions of them will come out all at once every 17 years. So it's uh it's pretty interesting all up through Tennessee and Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, um, they have the 15 year and the 17 year locusts they call them, but they're cicadas. 
Uh, Nick believes that um, the forced drawing question at, was actually meant to be uh, forced perspective. Oh, forced perspective. That's when you're just pushing perspective beyond what it naturally is. You're forcing, you're literally forcing the perspective. And so, you know, or let's say, let me turn these off. Right here. Let me turn that on. There we go. So here's a, let me do this. Here's a cube. And I'm going to put it in kind of a natural perspective. All right. That, uh, if you were Luke, who would be your Obi Wan Kenobi? Glenn Keane, most likely. Mm -hmm. Good, good one, Dust. <laughs> Glenn Keane would be my Obi Wan Kenobi. So there's a there's a cube that's kind of normal perspective. It's getting smaller this way, going to a vanishing point. Getting smaller this way, going to a vanishing point. Going this should be going to the same vanishing point. All this here, all this here, going to the same vanishing point, and all this going down this way, going to the same vanishing point. Okay, so this is a three point perspective on a cube or up above it okay now if you want to force a perspective it might be pushed like that you know we're forcing that perspective even tighter you know to really kind of fish island it almost <clears throat> and that's forced perspective. If we wanted to draw the wire frame, it would look something like that. And the wire frame for this would look something like that and there. Okay? So that's that's forced perspective. Yeah, so it's kind of like how the um, car cartoon animators back in like the 50s and 60s would draw skyscrapers from up high because it's such a forced look. Like, like from super big to super tiny in such a short distance. Yeah, it's just it's getting more into the image. It's almost like a fisheye lens. So there we go. I'm pulling that in there. Uh, for Halloween, do you draw classic horror monsters? I don't. I'm not. I'm not into horror stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm just. Yeah, I've never really been into it that much. Uh, I got a YouTube question. Uh, at Disney, assuming several different projects and features were in the works at the same time, which they were. How did you get to work on, say, The Lion King? Was I handpicked, volunteered, all kind of working on everything? Um, it really did come down to how, you know, I was part of the Florida studio. you got to remember at Disney, we had several studios all under one umbrella, Walt Disney Feature Animation. So we had a studio in Burbank, California. We had a studio in Orlando, Florida, which is where I was. And then for a good part of that time, we had a studio in Paris as well. And the Paris, the Paris animators worked on Hunchback. They worked on Tarzan. And so it really de determined which projects those studios were relegated to. Now, the Paris studio was basically a satellite studio. It was, it was there to help out the, other, the, the, the Burbank studio. The Orlando studio, where I was, we started out as a satellite studio. We started out you know, there to help with Lion King and help with Beauty and the Beast and that sort of thing. But then we got our own projects. We did Mulan on our own there. We did Lilo and Stitch. And we did uh, Brother Bear. At the Florida studio, and so we just grew to that. But it was, it really was determined, you know, as as you came off of a project, you know, the it looked at the the next project coming up would look at their budget. They'd figure all that out, and the needs were, you know, determined at that point, and as to who would go where. Now, I during during uh, Lion King, I worked on Lion King, and then immediately went over and helped out on Pocahontas. And I animated the character Pocahontas with Glenn Keane. And so I was lucky enough to go ahead and work on both. Where, you know, both those films were going on at the same time. And so to be able to do both was, was kind of cool. So I'm trying to draw quickly. I've been running my mouth like I always do. And trying to get this design... I'm having fun with the drawing though. It's kind of, I think it's going to be kind of a cool little painting. The lighting will be interesting. Is it possible, uh, can you animate one part of a character such as the head on twos and another part such as hands on ones in the same shot? You can. It's not recommended. It'll um, out of place. No, you won't, actually, you won't even really notice it that much. I mean, if the head's not really moving a whole lot, um, you can get away with it. It's just, it really 
gets the rest of everything else kind of complex it's it's not worth the trouble because you're really not saving that much time in drawing uh, you're actually adding more time yeah because you got to figure stuff out and um, you're doing stuff on separate levels which is always you know even though it's not that difficult it, it does add time sometimes to figure it all out um, but it, I mean, yeah, you can do it. I've, I've combined ones and twos before and it's, you know, didn't, I learned my lesson. <laughs> it didn't save me a whole lot of time. Can you tell us a little about your next trip to Manila? What will you be uh, doing there? Yes, I'm going with, uh, Armand Serrano, who is the organizer of it, does it every year. He, he's in charge of the whole thing. He's a, a, a Filipino, and we used to work together at Disney. He was a layout artist. He's a visual development artist now. And he started putting together this event, Icon Manila, uh, in mid-September every year. And uh, it's a wonderful event because what we do is we volunteer. We don't, go, we don't get paid for what we're doing. We get flown over, but we don't get paid anything. And we, give, we do the seminars, and um, uh, the money that's made through the, the conference that we have for that one weekend... Uh, Armand then donates it to the Philippines and they they build homes for people that lost their homes during the hurricanes and uh, that sort of thing so for uh, for needy uh, causes that sort of thing which I, I, I love that he does that and so uh, this is my second time going and um, it'll be September 14th and 15th September 14th and 15th and uh, it's it's going to be fun. It's, it, it, I went uh, two years ago and just absolutely loved it. It was my first trip to the Philippines, and uh, I got hooked. I can't wait to get there again. You said you're flying back on the 16th? Or I'll be back? coming back on the 17th. I'm actually going to stay an extra day. I wasn't able to find a flight home on oh. your birthday. I know Dustin's birthday is on the 16th. So, But don't worry. I'll take you out. We'll have a little, little soiree when we get back. Oh, you'll take me out. <laughs> 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 so this is I mean there's not much composition to this this is really just a this is just a bug design but uh, uh, it's kind of fun I'm, I'm kind of digging it. it's feeling it's definitely cicada inspired it looks cool well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do some color do you think big studios still want to see hand-drawn animation on reels? Mm, it depends on the studio. I mean, I, I wouldn't go to Pixar or Disney and show my Joe hand-drawn animation on reels or no. That's not what they do. Um, so, you know, it really depends on the studio. You have to cater your portfolio to the studio you're going to. And uh, you can't show, if you're going to a studio that does only 3D, don't show them hand-drawn animation. It's not going to help you. Uh, it shows that even if it's great animation, um, uh, if you don't know how to do 3D, then you know you you've just got to cater it towards the studio. I've got a YouTube question. I'm going to into Sheridan Animation for a first year. Do I have any advice? Uh, yeah, I mean just listen to your instructors. Don't get impatient. A lot of uh, people your age, uh, forgive me for generalizing, but tend to, to they want they want to. They want to accelerate it. They want to get it done fast. And, you know, animation, art, there's one of those things where you just can't, you can't, uh, you can't speed it up. You got to learn. It takes time to learn. So just enjoy it. Take your time and, uh, and just work hard and, uh, and keep everything simple. Do your, when you do your, uh, your final projects and your thesis and all that stuff, keep them simple. A lot of the biggest mistake that I see in young people when they do their thesis is they, they end up trying to do a feature film and it's that's not the idea you want something clear and well done and sometimes you know you have to keep it simple in order to keep it well done are there any Disney films that you've never watched oh I'm sure there are I mean I'm trying to think of one I'm I mean I never I a lot of the propaganda stuff from World War II and all that, I didn't watch a whole lot of that. Uh, but you know, as far as full-length feature films, yeah, I think you pretty much watched like I've all, pretty much all seen everything. Them. Yeah, pretty sure. No, I can't think. I can't think of any. So I'm looking at this bug up here because this guy, although I, you know, it's great having reference 
um, after they die, they really lose they lose their color. So I'm looking at this guy for the full color. Um, <laughs> people are requesting a cane and a top hat for the bug. You know what? You ask and you shall receive. A cane and a top hat. I think that's a great idea. See, you, you guys are you, you're taking it to the next level. So let's do this. Let's. Uh, I'm going to take this. Let's take all of this and let's go edit. Read. Whoops. That edit. part of the feature. Can you explain a deer face anatomy? Whoops. Yes. Deer face anatomy. I can try. I'll turn it this way. We're going to shrink it up a little bit. I'll pull it down here. Maybe stretch them up a little bit. There we go. Hit return. Edit. Image. Rotate. 90 degrees clockwise. Let's see here. Do you get asked to do uh, new work for Disney these days? I don't. No, I haven't asked, been asked to do stuff for Disney for a long time. I uh, I left in 2010. And... Uh, no, I haven't really done anything for Disney. I, I, I was going to do the Lion King children's book for the movie, but um, that fell through because the story ended up changing and it turned into more of a, a kind of a young reader type thing, and I wasn't comfortable with it, so we, we I backed out. But that's the only thing, really, that I've done. What if I... Have you seen any thesis projects that stood out to you? Um, not lately, I haven't. I've seen a few, you know, a couple, it's a uh, few years ago. I've seen a few. Oh, a couple of folks are asking for a monocle, too. <laughs> oh, a monocle. That's a cool idea. Basically putting this... Let me, uh, let me, I want to, I, I'm a big believer, even if you think you know, I'm a huge believer in, uh... Let me do this. I still do a lot of work for other studios, by the way. Um, I don't do stuff for Disney specifically, but I've done stuff for Warner Brothers and Blue Sky and and uh, Paramount. Uh, let's do this. I'm sorry, I need to go. I'm going to bring this down to... Ha, ha, ha. I think you're doing it to this bug. What's that? Put him on the roof! <laughs> Put him on the roof! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's see. Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Uh, let's see. Top hat. <laughs> Just want to look up a little bit of reference. Reference. There we go. It's see? I've already done it wrong. See, I'm a big advocate for doing it, doing it, and doing it, and doing it right. Oh, yeah. You yeah, didn't see, curve the hat. Yeah, right. I didn't curve the hat. Oh, I just clicked on the wrong image. Doggone it. Alright, let's just do this. Nope. Sorry, guys. But isn't there like a particular flat, flat brimmed? Uh, um... No, but I think of, of one that. This looks like he's Amish. <laughs> it looks like an Amish. It's an Amish cicada. <laughs> just put a big beard on him. All, all you need is just the <laughs> is to make like a short uh, mid portion of the hat. Yeah, now it should come up like this. Yeah, a little bit like this. I know it looks like a cowboy hat, but now when you get this on, now we're now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, see yeah, that was that's like much that. that's much better than that flat brimmed like that garbage I was drawing. Now that's a hat. Now that's a hat. <laughs> Whoops, let me get that ellipse right. Always gotta make sure your ellipses are right. In the movie Bugs Life, who's your favorite character? Oh man, I can't remember Bugs Life that well. Um I don't know. 
The, I, I really like the Praying Mantis guy. Oh, the Praying Mantis? Yeah, I just like this character. He's funny. Was there a Praying Mantis? Yeah. Yeah, he was the he was the theater. He he, he was all about was the like theater. A, let me do. I remember that guy. I remember the stink Let bug. me do a drawing under here. Yeah, like the uh, rhino beetle, but I also love the caterpillar. I got the touch of beautiful little butterfly. Oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> of course, he was my favorite. I forgot all he, about him. He finally like. He finally becomes a butterfly, but his wings are, like, so tiny. <laughs> well, he was voiced by Joe Ramp. Joe Ramp was the top story, one of the best story guys you'll ever meet. Unfortunately, he um, lost his life in a car accident. Oh. Um, uh, right about the time Brother Bear was coming out. Uh, but Joe Ramp was one of the, you know, one of the, the founders of Pixar. I mean, he really... Really pulled it together. So there's the cane. Let's see what we can do with a monocle. Let me come back up here. I gotta go back to my. Come down and yeah. Whoops. <laughs> there's, there's my little. Whoops. Why can't I grab it? There we go. Now I can get it back up in there. You know, with the hat and the cane, uh, a lot of people are saying it reminds them of uh, Jiminy Cricket. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, monocle. Oh, okay. Images. <laughs> Some of those are really douchey looking. <laughs> Sorry, excuse my language. They're just really funny. All right. Uh, is there any Disney uh, movies you think is underrated? Yeah, Brother Bear, man. <laughs> I agree, but also no, no, no. Treasure Planet. Yeah, Treasure Planet. I mean, there's. I think, I don't think any of them really deserve to get bagged. Yeah. They really don't. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, sometimes we have some that are better than others for sure. But um, we put just as much. No one, no one wants to make a bad movie. Right. We work hard on every. We worked hard on every film we ever made. It's just they. It's just certain like. There's a lot of movies that get overseen because, like, all the attention gets grabbed from another from another movie. Yeah. Like when Brother Bear came out, it came out during the same time as Finding Nemo, and Finding Nemo was having a lot more publicity than Brother Bear was. Yeah, Finding Nemo was a great movie too. Well, so. Yeah, but so was Brother Bear. But yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, it's, it's just I'm like I said. I mean, everybody works hard on every film. We've you know, just having been there, we we all worked hard on. We worked just as hard on Rescuers Down Under as we did on The Lion King or Beauty and the Beast. You know, the Rescuers Down Under, even though that one, you know, to this day, I think people still love that movie. It only did. Twenty-seven million dollars when it, it bombed completely when it came out. Which movie? The Rescuers Down Under. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Oliver and Company. Oliver and Company actually did well. Black Cauldron. Black Cauldron. It's not a very good movie. I liked it. Ooh, it's not a very good movie. Sorry, but no, that's not a very good movie. <laughs> the villain though was pretty creepy. Yeah. Not to bag on, I know there's guys out there that worked on it that I know, but yeah, it's just, e, there's some, there's some issues there, man. All right, let's get back to painting our cicada colors. If Brother Bear... Oh, I need to, I got to get back to Nick. Holy cow. Sorry, Nick. Uh-oh. If Brother Bear 3 existed, what do you think uh, the story would be about? I have no idea. I have no idea. Here we go. 
YouTube question from, uh, oh, here, I'm going to go back down first. I got another YouTube question. What do I think about mixing 2D and 3D animation like in Titan AE or Treasure Planet? I think it's awesome. There, it's been done in a lot of other stuff beyond that even. And, uh, and I, think it's, I think it's really cool, actually. So if it works, then yeah. If it stands out and doesn't look like it, it mixes, then yeah, I think there's an issue there. But if you can get it to work, then I think that's great. Both movies are awesome movies. Uh, here I have a, a YouTube question from a Russian audience member. Uh, do I like vodka? <laughs> do you like vodka? Do I like vodka? And have I been to Russia? I've never been to Russia, and vodka is the only alcoholic drink I drink. <laughs> it really is. That's vodka the only. I uh, I drink a lot of vodka. It's delicious. That's funny. It's funny you ask me that. Do I like vodka? I like vodka. You like vodka. Uh, did you see the new Lion King TV series? No. Oh, yeah. I didn't like it. No? No. No, I, I didn't like it. Why? Like, was it just bad animation or yeah, story? Yeah, I, I, all of the above. I just wasn't crazy about it. That's just my, not to take anything away from anybody. And, and I'm sorry if you worked on it, and I don't mean to disrespect you. I just... uh. I wasn't crazy about it. It's kind of like the, kind of like the old, uh, grumpy old Di Disney guy. Just like all the TV stuff, just like nah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not that bad. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I just thought they should have put a little bit more, more into the, into the, into all of that. I don't know if I'm putting too many colors on here or not, but let's see what he looks like. Trying to keep it consistent with, you know, they're light, they're light skinned under here, underneath. I'm pushing it a little bit. There we go. Go a little more reddish. So right now I'm just painting in local color. I'm just, just playing in the color, and then I'm going to go back in with shadows. A little later. Somebody wrote that uh, the right eye looks a little off somehow. The right eye. The one on screen right or his right? Uh, I think screen right. Well, let's see. Let's uh, let's rotate it. Let's see what happens. Well, I think it's the. Um, I think it's because it looks narrower than the. Eyes yeah, of the could be. Could be. I can fix that. I do see it now. Matter of fact, one of the things I don't like about it. Is it's on this layer right here. I'm going to grab it. Uh, did you ever sketch in Yellowstone? And if so, what did you sketch? Oh, I've sketched everything in Yellowstone. Yeah, everything. everything. I mean, I've sketched so much in Yellowstone. I just want to move them forward a little bit, too. Uh, I've sketched I've sketched deer or uh, bears from life. I've sketched uh, elk, wolves, ravens, all kinds of stuff. That feels better to me. That feels more like in, it's in line with what we need. I just need to recolor everything now. For traditionally painted backgrounds, how do they make the colors and light change since they're traditional painting? They would do, they, do they paint multiple versions and cross fade them? No, sometimes we would. Other times you'd use photo effects by through exposure. Um, there's all kinds of different techniques that we used. There we go. That feels better to me. Thank you for the suggestion, whoever said that. That feels better. Good call. Thank you very much, random citizen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. Always, you know, one of the things I learned... Oops, drawing on the wrong layer. Um, 
you know, working at a studio, always be open for criticism. Always be open for suggestion. Don't be defensive. If someone's seeing something that you don't see, listen to them. There we go. That feels, feels a little better, I think. I lost my bug. Oh, where's my bug? My bug. There's my bug. All right, let's see here. We're going to get a little bit of the... Let's get a little bit of that into the shoulders. We see a little color up in there. I'm going to push that color. Boy, oh, doggone it. I did it again. Sorry to ask, but what brushes uh, do you use and where do you get them from? These are all custom brushes. I make them myself. Uh, you make them yourself? I make them myself. Uh, so if you go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, that's creatureartteacher.com. <laughs> I've got a whole slew of brushes there. I make my own. And, uh, um, I helped with a couple. Yes you, yes, you do. <laughs> Dustin's helped with quite a few. A lot of the brushes on there are from Dustin as well. And then I go and I tweak them. Yeah, I can't remember which ones you, you posted up there, though. Did you post the um, the digital looking ones? There's texture brushes that you've done. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So, uh, um, let me get that. There we go. I'm gonna, I, I think I like this color. I'm just going to roll with it. Let's just roll with it. Just going to roll with it. So, go to Creature. So, sorry. So, go to. I, I stopped talking. So, go to Creature Art Teacher and go to Photoshop brushes. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of brushes available go ahead Dustin sorry man are, are we sorry to cut you off are, are we good are we okay we're good uh, for practicing drawing is it a good idea visiting your local zoo it's always a good idea to visit your zoo visit the zoo absolutely absolutely I'm gonna I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put the cane right in between his arms there his arm legs. <laughs> Martin, the uh, uh, Mr. Birthday Man. Says, Dustin, could you do some? Uh, could you do a voice for this bug? Maybe, perhaps, some British accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you? You're okay with British, I guess. I try. I, I really try my best. <laughs> sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it's bad. It's. I get kind of like the, the northern and the uh, and the southern kinds of accents a bit mixed up sometimes here and there. <laughs> That's just weird, man. It's so weird. <laughs> Let's do that. I want to go a little darker. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to lock the layer. Just let it kind of fade. Give him, this is kind of fun. There we go. What would you say makes a good Disney movie? Like, what do you think Disney... Great stories. That's not uh, just stories. Great stories. There's obviously the artistry, but it's great stories. That's how, that's how Disney has become what it's become. And the same with Pixar. And, you know, a great story, for me... The way I always explain story, story is the one element in an animated movie that can stand on its own. Meaning, I can sit here without any images, and I can tell you the story. And it doesn't need imagery, it doesn't need, it needs my mouth, that's all it needs. And if it's a good story, it's going to make you laugh, and it's going to make you cry, and it's going to and it's going to get you excited, and it's going to be, you know, an, an adventure, even just telling it. Now, all of the other things are there to support the story. They can't stand without the story. I can have all the best imagery in the world, but if it doesn't have a story attached to it, it's just that. It's just imagery. It means nothing. And so that's why, you know, story is so, so important. And uh, we spend so much time on it. I'm going to go... Let's go in here. Quick question? Yeah. I see that your annual premium membership sales end in less than three hours. 
Is it possible to extend time for me to get my paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> Send an email to Creature Art Teacher or support at uh, support at creatureartteacher.com and uh, we'll see what happens. We got a YouTube comment on Dustin's accent uh, and it's not too bad. Definitely pick a regional variation and stick to it if you can. Uh, do you you sound like one of the Beatles? So maybe uh, look at Liverpool. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually uh, I'll actually work on that. Thank you. I'm actually going to be, I'm going to be not too far from Liverpool. Ooh. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be, is it Cheshire, Cheshire, Cheshire County Cheshire. Uh, over near Manchester and Liverpool and all that. I'm going to be there the first week uh, working for a game company, uh, uh, doing some uh, workshops the first week of December, somewhere in there. Uh, do you have any recommendations for tutorials on how to draw birds? Um, I'm going to be creating a tutorial. I get that question a lot. I'm surprised at how often I get that question. I'm going to be uh, creating one very soon. After I get finished with um, the course that I'm working on now, the acting for animation, uh, I'm going to be doing a watercolor course, and I'm also going to be doing one for birds. Uh, I've got a lot coming up. And so... Um, I don't have anything I can recommend for you now. I just don't know what's out there, unfortunately. But um, but I will be getting something out myself in the next couple of months. Is it normal for artists to dislike their own art, even professional or experienced artists? Uh, I don't know if dislike is the right thing. I mean, it's... I think if you're insecure, a lot of insecure artists will dislike what they're doing. Um, I think, I think if you look at it and always see room for improvement, which is, you know, I always see room for improvement and I, stuff I need to learn. I don't necessarily dislike what I'm doing. Uh, just always know that there's room for improvement. That's, that's the biggest thing. I'm going to try to put a little bit of patterning in here. See what that looks like. And so, <laughs> somebody over here wrote, I think it would fit in here, uh, fit well here in London, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, right on. I mean, I'm sure my, I'm sure it won't be, um, I'm sure the um, locals there will, will know that I'm making up an accent there on the spot. Oh, but, yes. <laughs> but it would, definitely I would love to take a trip to London sometime. We will. So, we will. All right, I've got enough local color in here. I've got enough local color, I think. What were you laughing at? Martin says, maybe this bug got, got stuck in a lift in Scotland. <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny is that um, uh, watching the new Wreck-It Ralph trailers, and there's that scene where... Um, What's the what's the girl the Scottish girl's name from Brave? Um, oh, um, Mer Merida. Yeah, um, Merida. Merida. Like she she goes off on this little rant, and so many people could not couldn't understand, understand what she's, what she's saying. saying. I know but I saw that clip when I was there. Yeah, and I, but I understood it. But I was like, I need to, I I need to confirm that I know this. And so I, so there's a uh, YouTuber that I've watched uh, uh, named We Scottish Lass, <laughs> and uh, and uh, she she's uh, Scottish and she like does a lot Makes of differences sense. between like the U.S. and Scotland, like and things that goes on in Scotland, things that happens here, and all this sort of stuff. And she watched uh, that particular bit, and she was able to understand it right off the bat and she basically uh um recited it so so it's easier for everybody to understand what it meant what it meant and i was like yes i got it on the first try <laughs> that's cool okay so i guess someone uh um defined what force drawing is and it's based on a book uh by michael d matz mates and it's basically looking for the forces in your gesture, 
for your drawing. It makes your draw your figure drawing more dynamic for animators. So I, I that I okay. I I'd never heard of force drawing, but that makes total sense. So I've got colors all over the place on this guy, but let's just go ahead and let's just roll with it. So I think I'm going to. Uh, do you follow James Gurney? Uh, what do you think yeah. of his work? I love James Gurney's work. Um, I, lo I love James Gurney's work a lot. You know, I cannot try a Brazilian accent. I've never tried a Brazilian accent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to paint in the shadows right now. I'm going to imagine just the light coming off from the right. Let's do this. First of all, the hat. It's going to cast a shadow. But I think his eye, just the top of his eye, will be in shadow. Maybe the bottom of his eye will go into shadow. And it's going to cast a shadow down here. For brightening and shading your work, uh, do you agree doing it on the same layer or each one separated? I do it separated. So if you look now, I've got a layer nine, and I've got it set to multiply, and I'm and I've got kind of this blue, kind of blue gray as a cool color to to lay in as a shadow, and I'm painting it over the whole thing only where the shadows are. So I'm imagining, you know, like this to me it goes under. So this is going to be in shadow, right here. That cuts underneath. This kind of turns away, so that goes in the shadow. This, all of this is because it goes under, is going to cast a shadow, like so. All that casts a shadow across the shoulders, and we might have little. Little shadows in here. Okay, this is going to cast a shadow. This, to me, I think of it as a plate that's laid over. So it's going to cast a shadow that way. This one here is going to cast a shadow up into here. I imagine it like it's folded over. I just spit. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> I got all drooly. I got all drooly when I was talking. <laughs> Couldn't control my... <laughs> Couldn't, I was just... You're I'm drawing shadows, over. man. Shadows. <laughs> it's so... <laughs> I've got another shadow that might come off of here okay so I'm slowly building up all of my shadows that little poodle is just yipping his I don't know if you guys can hear him or not but our little poodle Max is just barking 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 all right I'm going to add a little shadow on the back part of his shoulder here that's all going to be in direct light this is going to turn under and go into shadow I'm keeping this all very loose. This is all in shadow. It's not direct light. And as it turns away, it's going to go into shadow a little bit. Might cast a little bit of shadow across his body like this. Shadow under here. I just watched Aladdin, and I loved the animation you did on Jasmine and Raja. Baby Raja was adorable. Baby Raja was fun to do. If you watch the movie again, watch when he turns from Baby Raja into Adult Raja. There's a lot of effects over the top of it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if you freeze frame it and go one frame at a time, I turn Raja into Mickey Mouse for a frame, and then he goes back to Adult Raja. But he's got he's Mickey Mouse with tiger stripes, but like I said, he's really covered up with effects, so I'm not sure if you'll see him that well. But that's what I did. I felt like doing something there, so I I, I put a hidden Mickey in there. Okay, so that's going to cast a shadow across his there. I'm thinking about the shadow going across there. All of this has got shadow, shadow, all this is in shadow, shadow over here, shadow over there. And what is the um, acting for animation course releasing? I'm hoping to get it out in the next two months. 
I know it's a long ways off, but within eight weeks. Um, the biggest thing that I have to do, obviously, is if I, I have to create the animation, the acting that I'm actually going to be talking about. So I'm animating a whole bunch of shots, uh, and it's just it's taking me time to do that. It takes me at least a week or two weeks per shot, and I'm hoping to have... Actually, I should have put less shadow on this side. I'm hoping to have about 10 shots done uh, done that I can I can go over with you guys and break down. So that's a lot of animation to get done before I can actually start, you know, actually even teaching the course and recording. So that's kind of the predicament that I'm in right now. It's just getting the work done. So where's the um, light currently coming from? It's kind of coming off from, off from the right over, like up like this direction. So probably the light, this shadow should be a little bit more down here. I do a lot of cheats in the shadows as well. So, um, yes, that bug definitely does have a gym membership. Someone just said, <laughs> and I'm going to put the shadow across his eye a little bit more as well. Back in there. When animating at Disney, particularly on Lion King, how much time throughout the year did you spend working on only animation? That's always. That, that was all we did. I mean, I, we spent a little bit of time working on our designs in the beginning. I spent probably a month, maybe set six weeks, designing Nala. Uh, and then I spent the next 18 months animating. And it, and it was only animation. That's all I did. So I'm here I'm just defining the shadows a little bit more. Getting some of these worked out a little bit better. Getting a little cleaner. So uh, did your directors know you pulled that Mickey Mouse uh, thing and left it and let it slide, or you just got away with it? Uh, I just got away with it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't tell anybody, but it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything bad. There we go. There we go. With Raja and Mickey and other Easter eggs, is that usually the animator's idea or the director's? It's never really the director's idea. We have two. We're they were you know we're too busy doing whatever. It always came up with somebody else, and sometimes they would get caught, and then it would come through, and you know we'd decide whether or not we we're going to let it go, or other times it just got through. So, yeah. It was pretty cool that sometimes they got through without anybody knowing. Uh, did you visit the premiere of Pocahontas in Central Park with Glenn Keane? Uh, if yes, how was it? No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I didn't go. <laughs> but I hear it was great. I got to change the brushes, you uh, how much creative freedom did you have uh, while working on a scene at Disney? As an animator, you actually have a lot of creative of creative freedom, a lot more than you realize. Um, it's really we were. Oh, I got to do a little bit less there. We were always very encouraged to bring a lot of ourselves to the table to you know to animate. Um, sometimes the directors were very specific about what they needed. I was very specific when I was directing Brother Bear about certain shots. Other times, um, not so much. And there is a lot of creative freedom in there. So I'm gonna do another layer now, uh, overlay. Keep it warm, not too bright. And I'm gonna hit all the light areas now. I've just done shadows. Now I'm gonna do light. And because he's got so many edges, you know, he's full of little plates and stuff, overlapping armor, and I'm going to hit a lot of edges. Uh, do you have an example of a good story and what makes it that good? To me, a good story is anything that's going to take you on a journey that you, you forget where you are. You forget all of, you know, you forget time. You know, when you're thinking about, oh, man, when's this going to end? Obviously, you don't have a good story. 
And so anything that just takes you away. And good stories, are, they're stories that you can relate to, that have characters that you can root for. You know, characters that are going to, you know, get excited for them and fear for them and all that. Um, that's, you know, it, and it takes time to come up with something like that. Um, YouTube question. Was Raj's design inspired by Shere Khan? No, he wasn't. Not at all. I actually didn't look at Shere Khan at all. I looked at Tiger's. Um, a lot of people think just because he's a tiger, he's inspired by Shere Khan. But if you look at, if you look at the two of them, they're not even remotely uh, similar. Shere Khan's actually a, me a better design, way better. But uh, here's a Twitch question: I'm having a hard time to come up with a story for my thesis short film. Can you give me any tips on how to create a story? Yes. Look at the things. Uh, break down the thing. What are the things that are inspire you? What are what are the things? You know, when we made Brother Bear, um, it started out, our first initial pass on Brother Bear was a story we wrote called Shadow Bear. And it was about a father that didn't spend any, enough time with his son. And, and it took them becoming a bear before he actually spent time with him in order, in order to help him. And that was inspired by a song by Harry Chapin called Cats in the Cradle. And, you know, my... Uh, producer Chuck Williams and I would sit there and we would just talk about the things that inspire us and stories and songs and all of that. And we started talking about the song Cats in the Cradle about this father who didn't spend enough time with his son. And by the end of the son, uh, by the end of the song, uh, there's a line where he says, my boy's just like me. He's turned into me. His, his son didn't spend enough, didn't want to spend any time with him because he never spent time with him when he was when his boy was young and I thought man what a tragic heartfelt story and so we started writing something our own version of something like that because it inspired us uh, so look at you know think about dreams think about you know what are all the different things that inspire you and break them down and you know and, and is there a story in that it's not ripping things off it's it's being inspired trying to get I got a YouTube question why are there uh, why are there some frames of the Lion King where Nala has green eyes while in others she has blue eyes a mistake by the colorist and how is the original design well I'm not sure if you're talking about when she was young I think she had green eyes when she was young I don't know it could probably just just a mistake in the inconsistency maybe they just decided to make an art direction uh, decision and just go with what looked better um, this is a really fast, kind of sloppy drawing, but I'm kind of having fun with it. There we go, right in front of for the eyes. You got one, Dustin? Are you sleeping? <laughs> no, I'm reading. <laughs> Somebody says... By the way, I think Brave should be called Mother Bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few similarities there. Oh, and that and uh, that actually reminded me because she, uh, the YouTuber I was talking about, she brought that up because the because Merida was actually talking about that whole scenario, and she started talking about the the movie itself and how it felt a lot like Brother Bear. And she says she loved Brother Bear. I was like, oh, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So now I'm just going in. I'm going to add little details. This is obviously a very sketchy. I'm not taking this all the way through photographic textures and everything. But I'm just going to add little details here and there. Give us bug a little bit of sheen. A little shine. What are some of the things you liked about Princess Mononoke? I love the designs. I love the little forest ghosts, little forest creatures. Um, I love the scale, the scope of it. Yeah, I like the design of the uh, the forest spear with the. It was like the a giant elk, but with a yeah with a human mask look of a face. Yeah, that was it. Was just stunning. Let's do this. I'm gonna do a little bit of sky. see what this will look like whoops what will be your next animal course maybe birds 
Bird. 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 Say bird. Bird. What yeah. movie was that? Huh? What movie was that? Bird. 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 Come on, you'll get it. You know it. Oh, sounds so familiar. Bird. <laughs> it's Bambi, man. I haven't seen that movie in <laughs> years and years. So you're saying it's been a while. It's been a long while. <laughs> Uh, can you draw any creatures from Studio Ghibli in the future, like Totoro? Sure. Uh, I don't know how to, but I'll figure it out. Do a reflected layer. <laughs> any reasons why Aladdin didn't have any nipples? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know why. <laughs> Just easing that out there. One thing I'm going to do before I get too far into this, so I'm just going to do another little reflected light. Do a little bit of reflected light on top of him. Let's call that reflected light. This is a really light. Have you seen a crystal? A rim light. Rim light, I should say. No, I haven't seen it. Did it come out? Yeah, well, it's, it's been out. Oh, crap. Some blue light. Let's put some blue light right about there. Need, I think we need to see that at some point. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit of like rim light on him. Maybe a little darker. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. So what's your best advice for learning how to create environments and backgrounds? Um... Study perspective. Study uh, great landscape painters. Um, look at textures. You know, all of that stuff will add up to helping you create really good backgrounds. Abstract design is a major one. Study your abstract design. Okay, so here you're going to see. You're going to see where I've overpainted them. So I'll have to go in and clean them up a little bit. But yeah, all of those will help um, when it comes to that. When it comes to uh, background design, environmental design. Study foliage. Study, you know, architecture. You know, all of that's going to help. I've got a YouTube question. Do you ever check my values when I do a full illustration? I don't think I've ever seen you do it at least on a stream and if you mean I check my values do I ever make it black and white no I basically I my, my I, I stick to the rule of, of if it looks good it is good and so I just try to I try to the one thing I do do is I try to jump around a little bit and uh, man I drooled again <laughs> I try to jump around and uh, you know from one thing to the I don't stick stick to one thing at a time Here, I want to get a little darker. How are we doing over there? Doing good. I was just replying to something. Um, reflection of Bob Ross in the monocle. <laughs> <laughs> we got ourselves a little friendly bug here. We got ourselves. Uh, you can, I can make them any color. This is my this universe. Is my world, not yours. This is my world. All right, I'm going to just leave it at that for now. I'm going to go in and clean up some of the local color that spilled over. Just go through and just clean up some of these edges. I'm keeping this super sketchy. A lot of a lot of the design work I would do um, for other studios would be really sketchy like this. And then once we bought off on some designs, then I would go in and really do you know finished work on it. But we never really had to go much more than this. 
And what's really going to help is when I do this reflected light. That'll really, that's going to really pull it into some cool, uh, a cool meaning. Awesome. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. Um, there we go. Ready for another question? Yeah, baby. Uh, is this character design inspired by the character design monthly challenge? Challenge? Nope inspired by this guy I found him when I went out walking or not walking I went I went to go vote right there I went and voted and then I went to lunch and I found the cicada on the ground and that's when I decided I'm gonna do a little cicada character when uh, when we get back and that's where he's inspired from I'm gonna brighten this up just a little bit that light and notice too now I'm drawing over the drawing over the drawing layer and this is all meant to be like reflected a rim light from another light source off camera it's true you couldn't use the color green at all um, in Aladdin you know what that's an art direction question that I'm not aware of I don't remember that it could be that could very well be true. I know, you know art uh, uh, Aladdin was very, very heavily art directed. Uh, are you going to remove the outlines of this drawing? Uh, I'm going to work over the top of them. Some of them I think work, holding it together. So I'm just going to I'm just going to work over the top of them, and some of them will stick. Some of them will go away. But I'm really trying hard to imagine there's a light source off off screen that are picking up and it's picking up the edges of our, our character here but you see I keep it I'm still keeping it somewhat loose now will you create an art book and if yes when um, we are going to create an art book where it's just something that's going to take time we it's something we've been talking about and trying to plan for about the last year and a half and it's just we just are swamped with so much other stuff that we just haven't had a chance to get to it but we will we will be doing an art book if you were to choose a character to animate from all animated movies that exist uh, who would the lucky one be and also uh, if you were to animate an original character how would they be like and what would they do Wow, um, those are big questions. Um, to me, a character you can't really a character is created based on the story. So I need to know what the story is going to be before I can tell you what the character is going to be. But I'll guarantee you it'll be something nature based and something with an as an animal. That's my preferred character to animate. Um, oh, we could we could work this thing. I mean, just work it and work it and work it. I can get this thing so photographic. But uh, I love Baloo. I love Robin Hood. I love Shere Khan. Um, if I was, if you're talking about, um, you know, my favorite Disney characters, my absolute favorite Disney character is Bambi. I would love to animate Bambi. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten this up, make it a little warmer, quite a bit brighter, and I'm going to go in and hit areas that might be a little bit hotter. Maybe it's an edge. You know, I'm, I'm imagining the light source like right, at, right over here to the right. So I just want to hit a couple of areas that might get a little hotter. Maybe a little bit there. Somebody says you should make the um, image uh, look like an old sepia photograph from the 1920s. I might do that. Like an old sepia photograph? Sepia, yep. Sepia? Yep, sepia. And I, I might do that. I, I might say sepia. What's that? I always say sepia for something. That's okay. Now you know. Sepia. I used to say, what was it? I used, there's a couple I used to say that were pretty funny. 
I'm going to not use the word for another week, and then all of a sudden I'm going to be saying sepia all over. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> sepia. Sepia. Oh, I remember when I was, I was, my internship, when I was driving into, uh, I was driving to Los Angeles from Florida, 1988. I'd never been out of, I was just a country bumpkin out of the trailer. And I, uh, we were driving into Tucson. I said, hey, man, we're almost into Tucson. <laughs> and the guy I was driving with, he goes, it's Tucson, you idiot. And I felt like a dummy. The Tucson? Tucson. Coming, in, coming into Tucson. So we all make those mistakes every once in a while. It's all right. So here we go. This. So see how that, that blue light just gives it a nice little dimension. I always like adding that on there. Just always adds a nice little a little bit of stuff. But now I'm going to go back. I'm going to jump back over. I want to start hitting some of these bright areas. Uh, where was that? Here? Here? There it is. I'll go right on there. And uh, I'm going to grab this and go really super bright. What's so funny? What's so funny? I was working at a gas station once and a customer came up to my register with a giant cicada hanging, hanging on his shirt. I looked at him and said, sorry, you know there's a huge bug on your shirt. And he was oblivious. I ended up prying it off of him and holding it while I finished the transaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Someone wants to, let me see if I can turn this black and white. Oh, let me do the other question. Did uh, did you, did I get to know or did I get to know and work with Milt Call? And if yes, how was he? No, uh, I'm too young for that. Milt was uh, uh, Milt was gone. Uh, he had passed away when I started in animation, so he was he was already long gone, unfortunately. Um, for what I heard, Milt was probably the best draftsman the studio has ever seen, but he was a little bit well, maybe a little difficult to work with. Say, you know put it that way <laughs> he had high standards he had very high standards and so sometimes uh, those standards would manifest them way themselves in different ways but yeah he had high standards he was an amazing draftsman um, let me see if I can turn this black and white I'm trying to remember how to do that with all the layers image adjustments let's just do this uh, hue and saturation. Let's just bring the saturation all the way. Oh, I gotta I gotta hit everything. See, that's the thing. I don't remember how to do that. Uh, oh, oh, what am I doing? Oh, let's do this. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Hold on. Stop talking. Just stop talking. I'll shut up. And I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna do layer. Ay ay ay. Merge group. There we go. And now I'm going to go image adjustments, hue and saturation. And saturation. I brought the saturation all the way down. So there's your values. Image, mode, grayscale. Thank you. And I and I teach I teach digital painting. I just never use my grayscale. Image, mode, grayscale. Thank you. Image, mode. Grayscale, got it. Boom, love it. Thank you, Nick. Merch. So there's um, there is uh, there's the grayscale. So you can see there's a nice there's a nice healthy range right there that we're getting. And I'm going to turn that off and go back to my color because value for me is probably the biggest, most important part. Value is more important than color, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you've got to get your values right, because you you can you can almost use any color as long as your values are right. And then even within, and then once you get your color right, then you're going to be paying attention to temperature. What's the temperature of that color that you're using? But for me, the most important part of getting it an image looking right is making sure your values your light and dark making sure they're right are you ready? I'm ready baby <laughs> slap it on me 
Uh, what are your thoughts of uh, the creatures designed uh, for the Pandora planet on, in James Cameron's Avatar? I love the way they were inspired uh, by, our, by our animals here on Earth. Absolutely. Them? I love them. And uh, my, one of my great friends was a designer on that. Carol Whitlatch, and uh, and I just think she did an amazing job. Will you be giving this character a mustache? A mustache? No, probably not. A mustache. I'll probably mustache. <laughs> I'll probably draw the line there. Okay, let's get into underneath here. What was this? Uh, okay, we'll just say that that's a reflected light. I'm going to play with some of that light in here. Uh, what is your method of drawing water? I really just draw... I, I think about water as a three-dimensional surface, obviously, right? First of all. And so I think about how... And I think about that surface being reflective. And then everything around us reflecting off of that water. Now, obviously, water has a lot of different traits. So is it cloudy water? Is it calm water? Is it deep water? Is it shallow water? Uh, you know, it's all of that. And so you have to think about all of those different traits to figure out how that surface is going to be reacting to everything around it. It turns out that um, the way that I say the word sepia, in, where I say, uh, say it as sepia, uh -huh. is the way that they pronounce it in Brazil. Brazil! Brazil! Awesome. Well, then go to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd love you there. I'm at home in Brazil! All right. I would love to go to one of their carnivals. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> Looks like fun. All right. Uh, what computer is more better for this job? PC. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I'm used to Mac. I use Mac. Dustin uses PC. It's an ongoing battle. <laughs> I just had to put it in there. Uh, uh, where did the idea for uh, the character Coda come from in, uh, in Brother Bear? The story team. Our story team felt that we needed a, a, a young character that Kenai needed because Kenai is a younger brother. He needed to have a younger brother on the trip in order to see what it was going to be like to be uh, an older brother. And so that's where that came from. And uh, to be honest, I, I initially fought it. I, I, that's not the movie I had in my head, but one of the things that you learn as a director is to trust your team. And, uh, and eventually I, kind of, I was swayed and, and it, was, it was the right decision. Because originally, he and I was supposed to be like the quote unquote younger uh, brother. Because Tug was going to be well, it was we were brother. yeah. Tug was Tug was a, a a holdover from when it was a father son story. I still had that story in my head, so that was part of what I the problem I was having was letting go of that. Gotcha. So here I'm just hitting. A little highlight there. Oops. Talking about effects, do you know Bob Sivins? Bob Sivins? Simmons. No, I don't. I wish I did. We'll give him a little bit of texture in here on his carapace. Do you think there's a big difference between the old uh, 24 inch Cintiqs compared to the new 27s? Yeah, the, the difference is weight. Weight? Travis is, or Travis, I just did it. <laughs> I always call my son Every my my time. brother's name. <laughs> my son is using the twenty four inch, and it's it's heavy. It's, it's a it's a it's monster. Like ten bricks strapped into one stand. Yeah, it's it's pretty heavy. And it's a stand that you cannot take the Cintiq off of. Yeah. So, it's uh, I think the so, I think the twenty four is discontinued actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or at least the 24 as we're used to it, as we know it. So I'm putting highlights. And also I think the um, resolutions 
increase too from the 24 to the 27 right oh yeah because the 24 that I currently have is like a is it a 4k or is it no like it's not 4k 2K? yeah mine is 4k that's the other thing about that they uh that um 22 inch that I unboxed earlier yeah. that's a 4k monitor Oh, it is? Yeah. Nice. So I'm hitting all these highlights. Keep Still keeping this a sketch. Still keeping it a sketch. Working over the top of the drawing. Oops. What the? Hit the wrong button there. Hit the wrong button there. Yeah, the newer, the newer 24 inch is, uh, is 4K. Somebody said... Oh, yeah? Okay, so they didn't discontinue it. I thought they did. I think they make newer models of the same of the same size. They just, each year, each year they also increase to a new size. Gotcha. Isn't that what they do? Or No. It's not each year. What they, you well, know, not they, each year, but you know what I mean? Like each time they release a new model. Well, they've been, well, they, yeah, they have been playing with the sizes quite a bit. So here I'm just playing, I'm, I'm going to go in and create some deeper shadows right now. Now, how did your original Brother Bear story morph from the father and son story into Keen Eye's view of love and bears? It just, it you know i can't give you any any single point where it happened it just through working on it and listening to other suggestions and ideas come up in the story room and you know all kinds of things happen um it just morphs it just becomes something new and if you let the process play itself out and you keep an eye on at least the the idea of the film you're trying to create then your film will still be better it'll be better off to let it morph into what it needs to morph into um, it's when you resist that, that change that you'll end up struggling because it, it'll it'll get stagnant you have to accept change now you have to uh, accept change within reason you can't let it go beyond the vision of what it is you're trying to create and that's where the talent comes in and just recognizing what's still in the vision and what's 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 breaking that now and what's you know how am i improving it or how am i breaking it and it just takes time to, to work that out twitch question any advice on how to draw shiny metal texture yeah think of a mirror and then think of the shape of the surface that you're drawing and distort the environment according to that shape so let's th let's do this let's turn this off let's say we have a ball I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a uh, ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down my cursor. Okay, so I've created a ball. I'm going to rasterize it so we can work on that. And let's say we want it to be chrome and and it's outdoors. So what do you have outdoors? The first thing you're going to have is a, a, a horizon line. So let's put our horizon line in, and let's say we're up, we're standing above the ball a little bit. So our horizon line is going to be up, on, up above. So if our horizon line is up above, up here, oh come on, there. If it's up here, then we're going to get a distortion down here. And so let's say our horizon line goes like this because it, it's behind us. We'll put little trees in there. I'm going to make this very, and it's going to wrap up around. Right in here. Let's do that. Okay, maybe there's a couple of trees over here. Like so. And there's a little rock over here. Maybe some... I'm just being very abstract with it. Okay? It's like a fisheye lens. And then we're going to have... Maybe some grass, some grass in the foreground. So that's going to be right here. We'll have some grass right here. And 
and maybe it gets a little bit darker because this part of it's reflecting on the little shadow area that maybe that that ball is creating just we're gonna do this very quickly so I can get back to my, my thing there and as right. as the grass recedes in the distance it's gonna get cooler and a little bit what lighter as it goes into the distance so we have something that looks like that so we can very quick and on the horizon what do we have well we've got it's going to be bluer on top a little bluer on top so that's going to be reflecting really blue sky let's say and then as we get down to the horizon we want it all to fit the shape of the ball as we get down to the horizon I'm thinking about a mirror that's just that's just following the shape of that ball maybe there's a few clouds in here I'll just lightly draw the clouds but as long as you follow the shape of whatever it is that you're creating it'll be okay maybe a little bit in here Once again, more shadows or more clouds following the shape. Might even have a few clouds up there. And I'm going to just go back in and redefine some of these, some of these trees in here. Man, time really flew today. I know. I know. It's already 2:56. I know. We did a two. We've already done two hours. And a lot of times it'll come up. You'll have a little edge up here. But there's a chrome. There's a chrome ball just reflecting. You know the world in it. You just got to think about if you're looking at a bumper. How does that bumper? Uh, how is that shape? Um, how is that going to reflect the world around it? Uh, and YouTube, how do I avoid buildup of color or opacity where two brush strokes overlap? That really depends if you're if you're talking about digital work, that depends on your blend mode. So you gotta watch your blend mode. And uh, you shouldn't have any problem. If you have it on multiply, then it's gonna build it up. If you have it on normal, it should be fine. So I'm gonna have to finish this up pretty quick. I've got you know, I've got a we've got a nice rough image here that I think is kind of cool. I'm gonna go a little bit whoops where am I at I'm gonna go a little bit brighter on there we go it's gonna hit some of these areas that might be catching like I'm thinking about this edge of the arm is picking up some areas that are light I'm drawing right over the top of the right over the top of the of the drawing layer do you make a lot of layers I, I tend, if when I'm doing character stuff like this, I tend to do a fair number of layers. Yes, here that light that that is you know the part of the arm is reflecting light off of the abdomen down here, which is going to have little bits of highlight areas in there like that. I'm keeping this really loose because I want to try to get this done in a in somewhat of a something that you can kind of look at without going is that what is that so I want it to kind of look okay so I'm just hitting what I'm doing now is just like where are all the little highlight areas as a bug that would show that would show up on him all the little shiny pieces there's a nice shiny I want to get them nice and shiny in here There we go. So the the reflection uh, ball they did does that work uh, towards drawing water as well? Yes, that's exactly that's a good question. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. It, that that applies to water as well. Once again, remember you guys uh, the um, I've got a brand new. On creatureartteacher.com, I've got a brand new option for uh, 
getting our content through streaming. We have a streaming option now for membership. And um, this is your last chance. You save up to $100 a year looking at that. So just have a look at it. See if it's the right option for you. And you'll get a lot of content on there. Matter of fact, our, my wolf, How to Draw Wolves, is now available on the streaming option now. So you'll be able to get that. And... Um, uh, or you could just become a member. We got it. You know, we're still doing a sale on that. And with that, you get everything. If just becoming a straight up member gives you everything we have on the site. So, um, you know, that's always your best value. But if you're looking for something that's not as much money right down, you know, that you have to put down, you can do the, the streaming option that you pay monthly on. And that's still, you know, you're getting a lot of content for that. So check it out. Because I want to keep doing this for you guys. What's the one thing you struggle with the most when doing uh, digital painting? Um, I don't know. Digital painting for me is... I, I really love it because it's so forgiving. I it's, think the one problem you have all the time is drawing on the wrong layer. Yeah, I do. I do that's do your, that. That's, that's I do draw position. on the wrong layer a lot. I do. You're right. <laughs> I mean, other than that, you work everything just fine. Yeah, but no, you're right. I draw on the wrong, <laughs> on the wrong layer a lot. Sorry that I had to remind you about that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so here I'm just defining some edges. You know, edges that might catch light. Uh, I got a Twitch question. How much do I think a traditional background influences a digital work? And would I consider it a plus in a portfolio? Um, you know what? I, I'm always consider it a plus when I can see that somebody can paint traditionally. That's just my personal preference. Uh, I just think it's I think it's really strong if you can do that. Uh, and so I and I'm, I'm a big believer that you know traditional work influences uh, always influences your digital work and digital work will always influence your, uh, your traditional work. They just, they really inform each other. And so the more you can do of both, the better off you are. Now, obviously if you're looking for a job, if you're interviewing for something that's digital, you know, put the right amount of digital work in there. You can show some traditional, but that's not where they're hiring you. So just be smart about how much you put in there. Of what kind of software do you guys use to put the drawings on the screen for Facebook Live? I like to stream my own digital art live on Facebook, but struggle with software for it. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, we are currently using a software called OBS for open broadcast. Oh, software. BS. Oh, uh, so BS. <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, I had to do that. Um, but it's completely free. Just look up OBS uh, software uh, online, you'll find it. And, uh, well, and we're actually streaming on multiple stations uh, from Facebook to Twitch and YouTube, so on and so forth. And we're using uh, Restream uh, to do that. But the, the base source material is OBS. Oh, BS. Can't help and, it. Uh, and, if you're ever, and if you do it, get the software and you have a, a hard time getting everything up and running, just look up uh, tutorials on YouTube and Google. Like YouTube is a is a great source for anything that you need help with, so yeah, OBS is the main source for our. Website. Putting a little glass reflection on there. Our, you know, this is definitely a rushed image. It's a very complex image I, I discovered to do, <laughs> uh, out, you know, in just two hours. And actually, we're over two hours now, but um, but it was fun, and. Uh, I think it's kind of cool image you know you never know where inspiration is going to come from and so here I was walking down the street and found a cicada and all of a sudden he became inspiration for this image and you guys helped me out with the costuming and I think it's kind of cool yeah he looks like he's ready to put him on the road <laughs> I know right <laughs> let's see let's do this how much would it cost me for you to make uh, me a picture of my bunny? <laughs> I don't do any uh, uh, any uh, commissions, unfortunately. Sorry. 
I am swamped. I'm too swamped. I can't do it. I ain't got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't got time for bunnies. It's only wrote a... Uh, <laughs> I'd like to draw your bunny, but I, I just can't. And I'm not sure if this is uh, uh, for OBS or just straight up what like, computer user, but it says uh, PC, right? Well, um, well, all the software that um, he's currently using, Photoshop, OBS... Uh, oh, BS. Oh, BS. Sorry, I can't let uh, that go. It's currently being used on his uh, Mac Pro, but it can be used on PC as well. Yes. So it works on both platforms. Oh, BS. Oops, wrong layer. Oh, where am I? There we go. I went right there. There we go. Do you remember the 1980s when the song Putting on the Roots was really popular? <laughs> I listened to the original Fred Astaire putting put him on the Roots. Putting on the Roots. Yeah, man. I, I like the Fred Astaire version more. So do you like the Fred Astaire version? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about that, Dustin? <laughs> that's the uh, that's the young Frankenstein version that's the funniest stuff I've ever seen when he did that and young Frankenstein oh my god let's do that and then I'm going to do this what's your method on uh, drawing trees my method for drawing trees is the same method I have for anything else. I just, I draw a tree. I just, I don't, I don't have a method. I, I have a method for drawing, which is to, you know, examine what I'm looking at and really try to find the form, but that's no different than drawing a portrait. <laughs> so the bottom of the cane, I got to bring this up. The bottom of the cane is not colored, and it's driving Nick crazy. <laughs> it's a shadow. Oh, maybe it's I'll leave it. Maybe I'll leave it. Oh, man, it's driving him nuts. Oh, leave <laughs> it. Just leave it. I say leave it just to, just to annoy him. Oh, I'll color that sucker in. There it is. Oh, there you go. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. So he says, uh, I want a shirt with Aaron Blaze's face on it and his favorite quotes, there it is, or go out go out and put some beauty back on the world. That's the one I want. I want you to have that one. That's my favorite one. It's, and it's not there it is, it's there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I do have to get a few deeper shadows in here really quick. I've got that set to multiply. It's a, it's a, or, or put your cart back. <laughs> put your, yeah. With... with with the shopping cart picture on on the shirt, <laughs> put your cart back. I I would I you know what maybe we should start doing that one. Yeah. Nick, there's a that's a design we got to do for the for the website. Yeah, I, I would say for design shopping cart cut out on the front with put your cart back, and to show <laughs> and to know that it's one of your shirts, just have your uh, Art of Iron Blaze logo on the. On the back of the uh, of the neck. There you go. I like it. All right, I'm just darkening up some of these areas just to get them to pop a little bit more, give a little more dimension. Would you consider this as a sketchy drawing? Yes, this is this is a very <laughs> a sketchy sketchy drawing. This is a very sketchy drawing. This is a very sketchy design. Now I could take this to finish, but this would be like a six or seven hour render maybe i'll finish it up maybe I'll, I'll spend the rest of the day and then when we get together on um on thursday i'll show you guys what i what i did i don't know it looks really sketchy though <laughs> you're a little sketchy your face is sketchy your butt's sketchy your chest hair is sketchy yeah i know <laughs> all right let's see here i'm just gonna call it i'm gonna call it hold on image a rotation horizontal yeah we'll just roll with that for now now let's do this I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take that copy grab that I'm gonna put that all in a folder whoops 
I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to put it in a folder. There we go. And I'm going to merge that folder. Layer. Mer I'm going to merge group. All right. Now I'm going to push the. Let's push the saturation. What's so funny? I just thought of a funny idea. Get, yeah. Get a afro wig. Yeah. Put it on. Take a picture, and have that as a cutout on a shirt, and call yourself Aaron Ross. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're, you're the funniest guy you know, aren't you? Yes, I am, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me do this. I'm going to just, I'm going to burn in a couple of layer areas. Uh, let me go to my airbrush brush, my airbrush brush. And we're going to knock this down to about 8%. And we're going to go to color dodge. I'm just going to hit a couple areas in here and just get it. Little hotter, little brighter. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There. We do want to put some texture on it. Do you want to put some texture on it? We just hit some of these reflected light areas too. Yeah, somebody uh, earlier recommended uh, uh, photographic textures on like the top of the wings. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to do all of that. I'm going to put photographic textures on the body as well. I'm going to put some. I actually want to put some little designs on them too. Like if I do something like this, where I set it to multiply, and let's do blue. I think would be. The right color. I could go in. This is where we just have a little bit of fun with it. There we go. And grab a different brush there. And let's say I want just go in and just just randomly put in. Maybe a few markings. And follow that form. This is why one of the things I like to do, I like to put markings on some of my characters like this because it'll help you define the form a little bit. Like so. There we go. And this, I mean, I'll probably I'll probably change it up a little bit from what I'm doing right now. But I just wanted to show you an example of what you can do, and really get those you can get those markings to really do the job of helping you define the form of the of what it is that you're creating. So now that arm is really the arm is nice and round now. See, say, say, say it's nice and round now. Say. I love trying to round it out there, Shane. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Luck is pocket. No, I said I'm an idiot. Oh, I didn't yeah. say you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit back here, but you see, I set it. I set the 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 blend mode to multiply, so it'll just it just sits right in there. And then one of the things I can do is uh, grab my smear tool, and I've got my grass brush hooked up to it. Watch what I can do. I can go in and just soften some of these. Look at that. Oh, that's, oh, yes, look at that. <laughs> yes. See how cool that looks? Looks yes. nice and natural. Nice and natural. Natural kind of woman right here. Pretty woman. There we go. So you can see it just kind of it sits nicely in there. Those are supposed to be just natural. They're just markings. Natural just, markings. Yeah, that's what the heck. Whatever. 
Because a lot of bugs have, have those sort yeah, of Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working this. I'm gonna keep uh, rendering it and just see what what I can come up with. But um, I don't think. Oh, you know what I should do? You, you should, should save, save it. <laughs> you should save. Yeah, I should save this. That might be good. Uh, cicada, gentlemen. Oh, I forgot the E. There it is. Gentle. Gentleman. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to save that on my desktop. There we go. Save. Save your work, everybody. So it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm having fun with it. And uh, I really like the, the added costume suggestions. Those were kind of fun. <laughs> but uh, it all started with this. Look what we created just because we had this this little bug. Oh, it does have two antennas. He's got two little antennas right there coming out of the front by his eyes. I don't think I'm going to add them on here. But, uh, yeah, this was a long one. We got two hours and 15 minutes today. 3.15, yeah. Yeah, and I still have uh, I still have a lot more to go on this. I can keep keep going with it. One of the things I like to do, well, you know what? Let's just try one more thing. You know what? You know what? I always do this, Dustin. Two hours later. You know what? If I Let's put some focus on him up here. So let's add shadow. I do this a lot, yes, you especially do. my character, my character ones, because I want I want to guide the eye. Let's just add. There's a little bit of shadow being cast across him. Let's just see what it looks like. I got to follow the form. Maybe no, maybe a little lower. So your work doesn't uh, auto save? No, I don't have it on auto save right now. Why do you not have it set on autosave? Does it just scan the way all the time? I just forgot. Oh. I'm an idiot. You really should set up autosave. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to set up autosave. So, I'd have to go in and change some of the lighting on the render. But, I always like adding these shadows. These extra little shadows. It just feels kind of interesting to me. So I said, you should save every artist ever. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be that one, one artist that goes, nah, it should be fine. Oh, I've lost work. Trust me. <laughs> See, stuff like this is kind of fun to play with, lighting like this. Like this, I'm not happy with this, but it's, you know, you can... You can have fun playing with your blend modes in Photoshop. And, uh, and you know, I can direct the eye a little bit better, right? You know, when I take that out, it's all, it, there's, you know, I like the, compositionally, I like that a little better. Let's turn that, let's try something different. I still like bringing the shadow maybe down this way. Mind if I tell um, a quick, like, worst save story? <laughs> Go for it. So back when I was working um, in the 3D industry, uh, we were told to constantly save, save our work whenever we can. And so I had my um, autosave set up, but I had it set for, like, every half hour. Because if I set it up to, like, every five minutes or so, like, I'll be work, 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 and then all of a sudden it would start saving it it would it would save for like another minute and then i have to go back now i so i basically had to wait right and so there was uh, one particular time where i saved my work and i got back into working again but all of a sudden the license went down we were all using a software called nuke and we're all sharing the license and it just went down in the server like the server was cr the server crashed the it guys did their best to fix it and we were sitting at our desk doing nothing for like a couple of hours. And the guys ended up having to revert back to the, to the day before um, to get it back to normal because apparently it was a uh, downloaded update that went wrong from that day. So they had to revert back to the old one. 
And so all the save progression that I made, which was like hours on end of that day. Gone. E gone. Even after saving it all, it went back to the day before, which was like almost nothing. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> Nick, someone was asking me, it might be Nick, why I uh, didn't have any reflected light on the hat. At first, it's a, in my mind, it's a felt hat, uh, so it's not going to have quite the same light reflecting properties. But, whoops, I'll turn that off. It should have a little bit. Yeah, certain, I want to keep it soft. Yeah, certain top hats have kind of like that silky, silky kind this of is, fiber. This is very messy what I'm doing here. I get a... I said it's messy. I said it's messy. Yeah. <laughs> messy. It's 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 gone through it's gone through some dirt. There. Maybe about that much. That's a good shine. Yeah. You look got a little shine on it. Good but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut I'm gonna call it right now and uh and get before going. You, before you can We've been two and a half hours on this thing, but I, I'm, I'm digging to having the shadow in there. I might even play with that a little, a little bit more, and uh, yeah, I think that looks better. And you know, the other thing too I like to do is you know rotate it and just see it from a different angle. But that was fun. You know, sat down and created a little character from a bug right here. So you know, you never know where your inspiration is going to come from. Like I said, I'm going to sit and finish this out and uh, spend a few more hours on it. And uh, I'll show it to you guys on Thursday. Hi, Rudy. On Thursday. But thanks again. Thanks for spending all this time with me. I had a great time. It was fun drawing this. And uh, next time, I don't know, maybe we'll do some watercolor painting. We got a new camera for the down shooter on my traditional desk, so maybe we'll do some painting, acrylic painting or something like that. We'll need to make sure to get some uh, USBs, USB uh, cords yes. for that. Yes, yes. So... Anyway, thank you, Dustin, for hanging out. And no problem. thank you guys. And put some beauty back in the world. You know, go out and be nice to somebody. Make it your goal between now and Thursday. Return and your shopping carts. And if you go shopping, put your shopping cart away. So anyway, thanks a lot. I had a great time. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for all the suggestions from you guys. It was awesome. And hopefully I'll get to show you something on Thursday that's a little bit more finished. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a be